Transformers can be really slow. So this DeepMind paper proposes to speed it up by running two transformers at the same time. Wait what? My name is Bai, I'm a machine learning engineer and a PhD in natural language processing, and today I will be presenting speculative sampling. This is a fairly recent technique that uses two LLMs to speed things up. We have the original model and a smaller model called the draft model. This can make the inference time about 2.5 to 3 times faster. And furthermore, there's a neat mathematical trick that uses rejection sampling to do all of this without any loss in accuracy. And a short side note, Google and DeepMind independently published the same idea at roughly the same time. There's basically no difference between the two algorithms in these two papers, but I personally find the DeepMind paper a little bit easier to read. So for the rest of this video I will go with the notation from the DeepMind paper. But the Google paper has some interesting mathematical analysis that's worth checking out as well. Let's suppose that we are generating a sentence using a very large 100 billion parameter model. That means that for every token we want to generate, we have to do a forward pass through the whole model, which roughly takes 100 billion operations. We have to do the process all over again to generate the next token. Jeffrey Hinton did his PhD at the University of Something, and I didn't know this, but it turns out the answer is Edinburgh. This is pretty difficult, and requires a lot of knowledge and a pretty big model to get this correct. But the previous token of predicting the word of is really easy, and you could probably get away with using a much smaller model. So it would be nice if we could somehow use a smaller, say 1 billion parameter draft model to predict the easy tokens, and then use the big model only for the more difficult tokens. The second key idea that makes this work has to do with the structure of the transformer model. We've just talked about how the model can generate a single token with one forward pass. But you can also give a transformer model multiple tokens and have it check all of them in parallel also with one forward pass. So it takes roughly the same amount of compute to generate one single token as check the entire sequence of tokens in parallel. And specifically, it generates a probability distribution for each token in the sequence. In this case, the probability of the last token will be low because the model would be able to recognize that Jeffrey Hinton did not do his PhD at the University of Toronto. Now let's talk about the algorithm. So first some notation. We're gonna call MP the draft model and MQ is target model. Just in case you're confused which one is which, the target model is the bigger one and the model that you want to emulate. And the draft model is an order of magnitude faster and smaller. We also need a prefix string to complete the sequence, which we'll write as pf. And k is the number of tokens we want to generate in one pass, which let's assume is 5. The first thing we want to do is run the draft model autoregressively 5 times to generate a sequence of 5 tokens. In each iteration, the input to the model is the prefix and all of the tokens that we generated so far. The model produces a probability distribution over the vocabulary and then we sample this probability distribution to get an actual token. So in the first part of the algorithm, we have run the draft model for k steps to get k tokens. Then the next thing we do is run the target model once in parallel. The target model is fed the prefix and all of the tokens that we generated in the draft model. And it basically checks all of them in parallel, so it produces 5 probability distributions for each of the 5 tokens. And at the same time, it also generates a probability distribution for the sixth token in case we need it later. And all of this can be done in just one forward pass. And one thing to note is, we're only generating the distributions for the target model. We are never sampling from these distributions. So all of the tokens are going to be sampled from the draft model, not the target model. So to recap, at this point we should have something like this. We have a sequence of 5 tokens that are generated by the draft model. We also have the probability distributions of each step of this generation. And for simplicity's sake, just to illustrate in a table format, I've only shown the probabilities of these 5 tokens, but remember that these are actually probability distributions as well over all the tokens in the vocabulary. And finally, we have the probability distributions from the target model for the same tokens. If you made it this far, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel to feed the algorithm. And check out my channel because I have lots of other videos about making large language models more efficient. The next step of the algorithm is to decide which of these tokens we want to keep, and the paper calls this rejection sampling. 
And how this works is we're going to go through the tokens one at a time looking at the probabilities that the two models assign to it. And we're going to decide whether we're going to keep it or are we going to reject it. So the number of tokens that we accept will be from 0 all the way to 5 because in the worst case we might reject the first token and in the best case we might accept all of the tokens. And we can keep going until the first token gets rejected. So imagine if a draft model generates a bunch of interesting words and then the target model starts checking each of the words one by one. So the first word is okay, the second word is okay, but the third word it disagrees with the draft model and it thinks a different word should have been chosen instead. But at this point the paths have diverged and we don't really know what should come next because all of these words that um, the draft model have generated all assume this word was correct and if it's not then they're no longer relevant and they have to be discarded. And that's why we run the loop to accept, 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 and then when the first rejection happens, then we have to break out of the loop. So each iteration of the algorithm has two cases. In the first case, if Q is greater than P, then we just accept the token. And here, this is a case for the first token and the second token. The Q here is greater than P. And intuitively here, the draft model P of X has generated a token and the target model is even more confident that it is correct than the draft model, so we just accept it. But what happens if q of x is not greater than p of x? Then we enter into case 2. If qx is smaller than px, then we roll a dice to determine whether we want to accept the token or not. And we accept it with the probability of qx over px. So for the third token, qx is greater than p. So we accept it with probability 0.8 over 0.9, which is around 90% chance. And let's say that we get lucky and we do accept this token. Now the fourth token, we have a similar situation that Q is less than P. So the probability of acceptance here is 0.3 divided by 0.8. And let's say this time it gets rejected. After the rejection, we break out of the loop. So we discard all of the tokens that's after re the rejected ones. But actually with the information that we have, we can produce one more token before we have to stop the process. We have accepted the first three tokens, but decided to reject token 4. And when we reject it, we want to sample it again, not from the draft model px, but from the target model qx. And guess what? We already have the probability distribution of qx from before. So we can just sample one token from this distribution. Actually, the last part is not quite accurate because we don't actually sample Q of X. For the last token, we actually sample from an adjusted distribution, QX minus PX plus. This just means that we subtract the token probabilities for across two distributions and ignore any part where the subtraction will cause the probability to be negative. So here, any of all of these parts will be left out and we are basically sampling from this region here or the difference between Q minus P. Now I will admit that this looks quite strange and I've never seen anything like this before so I'll try to explain intuitively why this makes sense. So remember that our goal here at this point is to sample a token from the distribution QX, the target distribution. And we had these two cases depending on whether QX or PX is bigger. Let's look at what this means graphically. So in case 1, we have a token sampled from px and qx is greater than px. So we're in this bottom region of the graph where the p curve is less than the q curve. And case 2 is when qx is less than px. So we're in the bottom left region of the curve and we have decided to accept with probability q over p. The only part that's missing now is when Q is less than P and we have decided to reject. So in this case, we want to cover the part of the Q distribution that has not, not already been covered. This part here is the top right. So that's why when we reject in case 2, we sample from the distribution Q minus P. This is a fairly hand wavy explanation, but there's a more rigorous proof in the appendix of the paper. And anyways, the most important thing to note here is the token distribution is exactly qx. So in other words, we have this procedure that's kind of complicated with several different cases, but at the end, we sample a token that's the same as if we just sampled from qx originally. 
So there is no loss in accuracy if we do this method compared to if we just sample naively from the large model from the very beginning. Uh, one last thing to note is that if we get really lucky and we accept all of these tokens that were proposed by the draft model, then we simply sample from QX because there is none of the rejection logic that we have to deal with in the probabilities. So how many tokens are generated in one pass of this algorithm? So let's count. So in the worst case, if the first token is rejected, then this algorithm only generates one token. And in the best case, if all of the tokens are accepted, then we generate k plus one tokens. And this part here is really important because it means that even in the worst case, we are still generating at least one token per forward pass of the large model. So we are at least not making the algorithm any slower. Like imagine if we didn't have this trick and it sometimes generated zero tokens, then we can be bad and maybe be stuck forever. But thankfully, this never happens. Here we have a visualization that's taken from the Google paper. You can think of these purple blocks as the time it takes for the large model to generate one token. So when k is 3, this means that every third token is generated by the large model. And this is represented by the light blue, so we can see this speeds it up quite a lot. And when k is equal to 7, this means that for every 7 tokens, then we have one token is generated by the large model, and so most of the tokens are generated by the small draft model. And this is even faster, but you start to get diminishing returns. Here's a diagram from the Google paper that shows speculative sampling in action, generating a full sentence. All of the green tokens are the tokens that are generated by the draft model and then accepted, and the red tokens are the ones that are rejected. Each time we reject a token, we sample another token that's the blue token from the target distribution. And then we continue this for about 10 more iterations until the entire sentence is generated. Here are the results from the DeepMind paper. They recommend setting k to between 3 and 4, and they find about 2 to 2.5 times speed up compared to autoregressive decoding. And they confirm that the result is basically the same, which is what you should expect because there shouldn't be any decrease in accuracy. The Google paper ran a slightly different set of experiments, and they recommend setting k between 3 to 7, and they find a speed up of between 2 to 3.4 times compared to autoregressive sampling. So the results are very similar between these two papers. And that's it for my video on speculative sampling. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And if you haven't already, Remember to like the video and subscribe and check out my other machine learning content. Goodbye!